Welcome to Major Square in Bethlehem on a relatively tranquil summer morning. To the east, outlined by the rising sun, you see the church as an activity. Imagine this plaza at midnight, every Christmas Eve, packed with thousands of people attending a mass celebrating the birth of Jesus in tiny Bethlehem more than 2,000 years ago. And if you look 180 degrees the other direction, about 100 meters away, you see a Muslim mosque with its white minaret pointing to the sky, equipped with speakers projecting Muslim prayers five times a day, sometimes competing with the services of the church of the nativity. Now let's listen to Brent Isbell describe some of the history and characteristics of this important Christian moment. Well, we're in Bethlehem standing near the door of the Church of the Nativity. Uh, just to our east here, uh, to our west is Manger Square, where multitudes, throngs of people come at Christmas time. It's hard to stand here and not think about uh, the prophecy of Micah. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, you are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. This is the original city of David. It was here in Bethlehem that uh, Jesse raised eight boys and that Samuel came and anointed uh, the youngest and many would have thought the, mo the least likely David to become the next king of Israel to succeed Saul as a city. Uh, very, very small in the ancient world. It's a city of significant population now, tens of thousands of people. Um, it was the house of bread, perhaps you remember. Uh, the place where Ruth gleaned grain in Boaz's fields and where famously we remember that shepherd watched their flocks uh, on the night that Jesus was born. But the main thing people come here for is, is this church the Church of the Nativity, arguably the oldest continuously existing church in the history of the world. Built by Emperor Constantine with the help and, and research of his mother, Helena, who came here uh, looking for sites in the Holy Land. And when she came to Bethlehem, she asked the locals. Um, and they remembered. Uh, people who live in this part of the world live at that time lived in, in their own houses for generation after generation and, and memory and tradition was strong and they pointed out to Helena a cave or a grotto uh, that they said was the site of Jesus' birth. And so this church has for since the fourth century enshrined the place um, that tradition says Jesus was born. Um, it has quite a history. Uh, built by Constantine, of course, in the 4th century, uh, rebuilt by Justinian in the 5th century with a very different design, but recently it's been discovered that a lot of the original church, or at least significant portions of the original church, are still here, uh, including you can look down to the mosaic floor, you can see pieces of the pillars uh, that were part of the original uh, design. There's an interesting story behind this church that, uh, like many sites in this part of the world, uh, it was it fell victim to wars and uh, and and uh, earthquakes and all kinds of things. But when the Persians came uh, and were going to destroy this church, they discovered inside that um, that there was artwork uh, commemorating the three wise men. And so when they saw the three wise men who looked like them, uh, they said, "Oh, this church must have been." Uh, built it been built in dedication to our own people so they let it stand uh, this is the core of course a church that is shared has come to be shared by by Orthodox and Catholics and Armenian Christians if you go in that door right there where people are going and coming notice how low it is you stoop down to go in what a what a great symbol of uh, exercising humility that you lower yourself to enter into uh, a holy place. And as you go in, you enter into the main sanctuary, you go up toward the altar area, and on the right-hand side, you queue up or line up and go down under the altar area into uh, the grotto. And there on the right, you see in the floor a star commemorating the 
the, the site that was identified as the place where Jesus was born on the left is another site that commemorates uh, the place where he was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. And, and one of the very striking things about coming to Bethlehem, just overall, uh, is that um, it's, it's obviously a tourist site, but it's a tourist site in the West Bank. This is Palestinian territory. And so you go through checkpoints, you go past soldiers, uh, the army has a strong presence everywhere. And I think it helps us to remember that when the Word became flesh, uh, all of those Christmases ago, that when God put on flesh, He came into a world that was, that was much like ours. It was complicated, it was complex, it was dangerous. Politics were tricky, people had trouble getting along. Uh, some things never change. Uh, but welcome to the Church of the Nativity. Now we're inside the Church of the Nativity. And as you can probably see, the first thing that probably catches your attention on both sides of me here is that they are doing a significant remodeling project right now. So it's a little disappointing in some ways to see all this scaffolding around us, but we can still see some really cool things right here. For instance, uh, we're standing on one floor but as you can see over here, um, there is an opening where you can look down to the original um, tile floor that was part of the original church built in 325 by Constantine. Uh, over in this direction, there's a pillar. And as they were doing work, they discovered, you can see down to the base of the pillar, uh, they became aware that the, base, that the base that you can see there was not significant to support the pillar above it. And so they said there's got to be more. So when they opened up the floor below it, they realized that there was more pillar <laughs> and that there was more beneath it. So the, the point is that there is, uh, there is more here to the original 4th century church uh, than anyone had ever Imagine some had believed that when it was destroyed once upon a time uh, and, re and rebuilt by Justinian that it was virtually completely rebuilt and it was it was he, he, he changed the octagonal design uh, to, to more of a cross shaped design but that much of the original structure was preserved. You can also see looking back into the doorway here that we came through the very small doorway that you have to duck down. But notice the larger framework inside of what would have been the original entryway to the church, which was large and very impressive. As you look back this way to the east, you can see the altar of the church. And it's to the right over here, just on the other side of these pillars, that you line up to go back under the altar. We're in the, the orthodox side of the church, as you can probably see from um, all of the... Uh, the uh, ornamental decorations uh, and we can see some priests who are at work right now uh, getting things prepared for the day I'm sure but you go to the right and then you go down under the altar and you're in the grotto but this is the interior of the church now we've moved to the front of the church to the right of the altar and we're standing in line near the entrance of the grotto though the scaffolding of the renovation limits our view somewhat Notice the lamps, icons, and decorations of various sorts placed here through the centuries. As is normal, there's a long line of people waiting to descend the steps into the cave to see the spot traditionally marked as Jesus' birthday. In the grotto, the people prevent us seeing the 14-point star in the floor to the right of the stairs going down. To the left of the stairs, as we enter, is the place where Mary laid Jesus, wrapped in swaddling cloths. It's sobering and striking to see the extreme reverence given to these simple spots as people take pictures, touch both spots with their hands, or rub cloths, scarves, or crosses over them, or even bend down to kiss them. One is reminded that people from all nations, cultures, and languages come here as part of their special pilgrimage, something that unifies nations and generations. Now we need to use this card to mark the exact place where Jesus was born. But you know from the Bible, he was wrapped with a swaddling clothes, 
and place the baby in jail. And notice that this is a cave. You can see the stones of the cave over there. 